Today I'm going to talk about and review the amount of passive income I get from things like my bank interest and dividends. The reason why I'm making this video is because I was compiling my finances the other day and shared with a close friend the amount of bank interest I get each month and he suggested that I make this video to encourage people to save more. That's really something I've been promoting all these years of making finance content and I suppose showing people the result of having more savings can be more effective than just telling people to save more. As the saying goes, you sell the sizzle, not the sausage. Also, videos where I review my finances are usually quite popular, so yeah, I gotta play the YouTube game, so drop me a like and comment on this video if you want to see me review even more financial information about myself. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Telegram if you want to earn more from your credit cards, savings accounts, etc. More than 22,000 people have already joined. Whatever I share is also a result of my own research into how I manage my money, and I share all these in my Telegram. I do have one more reason why I'm doing this, but I'll leave it to the end of the video. So let's jump into January 2024, and I got $1,409 from various bank accounts. This was in early 2024, so it was the good old times where Bonus Saver was giving 4.88% per annum, and UB1 was giving as much as 5% per annum. So instead of putting my cash savings into a single account, I split it up across different bank accounts to optimize the maximum interest rates different banks are giving. In this month, I was using UB1, OCBC 360, bonus saver, and e-saver accounts. Now, I have to admit that this isn't truly passive in the strictest sense of the word passive because I had to fulfill different conditions like credit salary, make credit card spend, yada yada, but it really is fairly minimal effort. And even if I didn't optimize, I think I would still have gotten around $1,000 per month of interest. I also have some savings in money market funds and bond funds. The past couple of years have seen apps like Moomoo, Moo, Webull, Chocolate Finance, etc. And they have been really wonderful in introducing places to get higher use for cash. I find them relatively low risk, right? See this video where I talk about the risk return these instruments give. But the long story short is that I consider them to be cash equivalents and they do give me pretty good passive income per month. In January, that figure was $641. So around cash and cash equivalents, the total was $2,050 in January, a pretty decent sum and more than enough to pay off my mortgage and even maintenance fees. In January, I also got some dividend income. I still own some amount of Straits Times Index and that gave a dividend of $721. My STI ETF fund gives dividends half yearly, so this is the first payment for the year. I also got $55.76 from another bond fund that I own. So that makes a total of $2,827. I do have some dividends from my non-Singapore investment portfolio, but to be honest, I don't really track them and I talk a little bit more about them at the end of the video. February was pretty much the same except I got more bank interest despite there being fewer days. I had $1,614 of bank interest and that's also because I swapped out eSaver account for HSBC EGA which has higher interest. I regularly update my Telegram subscribers on such account interest rates, so stay subscribed if you want to earn more from your bank accounts. The gist of HSBC EGA and Standchart eSaver is that they give their high interest rates on fresh funds, typically for 1-2 to two months, so yeah, you have to play this game of transferring your funds back and forth to keep your funds fresh for each month, but it is pretty uh, low maintenance, so I do it every now and then. On the cash equivalent side, I had $559 and I also got $316 of dividends from some REIT holdings I have. So it was a pretty decent month with $2,489 of passive income. March and April were pretty similar, bank interest was $1,754 in March and $1,638 in April. Cash equivalents gave $550 in March and $613 in April. That brings us to $2,305 passive income in March and $2,252 in April. By the way, because this video is meant to show the income someone can generate from cash savings, I'm excluding things like POSB cashback bonus, which is a relatively passive $70 per month, uh, watch this for more details, and other hacks that can get $500 per month. Perhaps these are things I should share separately. Well, subscribe to the Telegram for updates. Moving on to May is when the bank nerves hit. UOB1 was dropped to 4% per annum from its 5% per annum rate and bonus saver dropped to 3.68% per annum from 4.88%. For this month, eSaver was giving about 3.5% per annum so there really wasn't much of a point for me to fulfill bonus savers uh, various conditions for just 3.68% per annum so I switched out from bonus saver. Want to get an easy $500? All you have to do is credit your salary to your POSB or DBS bank account and spend with your credit card. There are just three easy steps. 1. Register with the link found in the description box below. 2. Credit salary of at least $1,600 to your POSB or DBS bank account and get $300 cash reward. 3. Spend a minimum of $500 each month with a POSB or DBS card for 3 consecutive months starting 1 month after your first salary credit for an additional $200 cash reward. That's it, get $500 with these steps. 
new to POSB All DBS credit cards? Apply now with promo code SCAUG and get additional $100 with no minimum spend required. Check out the article in my description box for more details and remember to register soon. May's bank interest dipped to $1,448 as a result of the lower rates. Cash equivalents were fairly stable at $584. My REITs again pay out dividends of $324 and I can see why people love REITs so much because the yield is relatively high and the payout is frequent but yes, again, more on this topic later in this video. In all, May got $2,358. In June, I decided to switch everything out from UOB1 because it dropped to 4% and 4% per annum on $150,000 isn't really that bad but isn't really fantastic either and UOB Evo was nerfed which made UOB1 account a lot less attractive to me than it was before. Emptying my account in June also served another purpose. I can qualify for UOB's Q3 savings promo which can bump up the effective view of UOB1 account to as much as 5.94% per annum. See this video for more details. I didn't participate in July nor in August and September is the last month to take advantage of this so we have about one week left from the time of this video. And given how the Federal Reserve has officially cut rates, I suspect Q4's promo is going to be a bit worse, so I'm most likely going to jump on this before the promo ends on 30th September. If this is something new to you, I would encourage you to watch this video for more details. Bank interest in June was $1,700, which is an increase from May because I switched to HSBC EGA. June's promo was 4.45% per annum, which is after all a bit higher than UOB's one nerfed 4% per annum rate. And of course, eSaver was getting 3 plus percent. So yeah, HSBC EJ was the way to go this month. Cash equivalent didn't do very well this month, dipping to $534. Passive income for June was hence at $2,235. In July, my bank interest was only $695. This is because I moved a substantial amount from bank savings to money market funds because Moomoo was giving an irresistible guaranteed 6.8% per annum return. It was an excellent promo and I jumped on it, so really you have to subscribe to my telegram and leave notification turn on so you can be informed of such deals. This brought my return from cash equivalents to $1,733 and dividends from my STI came in again and it was $756 with another $55 coming from bonds. In total, July gave me $3,241 of passive income. In August last month, bank interest fell to a low of $551 because I shifted about $80,000 to Singapore Savings Bond before the rates fell below 3% per annum, which is something you have known if you have seen my previous video or my Telegram post. Cash equivalent gave me $1,656 and the drop was due to some reallocation of funds again. I reallocated my funds elsewhere and that is a video for another day. Dividends from my REITs came in to a tune of $316. In all, August passive income came to $2,524. So what's my conclusion after receiving $20,234 of passive income in 8 months this year? 1. Earning more and keeping more of what you earn is really important if you want to reach a state of financial freedom. We live in a capitalistic world and the fact is that money just generates more money. So the important thing to do is to get your first pot of gold because after your first pot of gold, your second, your third, etc. will just be easier. I want to pat myself on the back because I spent 3 years of my life earning just $1,000 per month from my active job to earning pretty much passively $2,500 per month. I couldn't even qualify for credit cards last time and now my bank interest and dividends are actually enough to meet the income requirement for credit cards. Number 2. After patting myself on the back, I need to slap myself on the face because after showing you all these numbers, I have a confession to make. Passive income actually doesn't really matter. One last reason why I made this video is really to introduce viewers to this thing I call the passive income trap. Now this is a very big topic and will require a whole video of its own so stay subscribed for that. But it explains why I don't track things like my US dividends nor am I that impressed with my REIT and STI index dividends because passive income actually comes with a trap which I'll elaborate on in my next video. In the meantime, check out this video where I talk about my active income that I've earned over the years which build up to this point such that I can earn a passive income. So I'll see you in that video.